ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه واله وصحبه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد if we ponder and contemplate over the last few days this season of worship this pillar of islam the hajj and all of the different ibadat acts of worship that are connected to it we find that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve the traditions and the culture of one of the greatest prophets and messengers that was sent to mankind a friend of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a person to whom allah jalla wa ala mentions his praise and shows love and affection for him and singles him out in the quran and upon the tongue of our great messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this season of worship this pillar of hajj these traditions and cultures that we've adopted or we've seen our loved ones travel to mecca in order to fulfill this obligation is a culture a tradition and a ibadah of none other than ibrahim alayhi salam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises his mention allah jalla wa ala tells us how great of a messenger how great of a servant he was to allah jalla wa ala he says throughout the quran in ibrahim kana ummatan qanitan lillah hanifa wa lam yakun min almushrikin indeed ibrahim was a leader in himself an ummah in himself like a nation he is a descendant from the servants of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa lam yakun min almushrikin he was not from those who disbelieved in Allah not from those who committed shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says regarding him subhanahu wa ta'ala wa atainahu fid dunya hasana wa innahu fil akhirati lamin as-salihin and we gave from him in this dunya hasana we gave from him in this world greatness and good and in the akhirah he is from the righteous people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says regarding him thumma awhayna ilayk an ittabi' millat ibrahim hanifa and then we inspired you o muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam follow the milla follow the religion of ibrahim alayhi salam wa ma kana min al mushrikin indeed he is not of those who associated partners of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this mention of ibrahim alayhi salam it continues in the quran Allah jalla wa ala says wa laqad istafaynahu fi ad-dunya wa innahu fi al-akhirati la min as-salihin and we chose him we preferred him we selected him in the dunya and we made him from those in the akhirah who are the righteous righteous servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and why was this the case qala lahu rabbuhu aslim qala aslamtu li rabbil alamin because Allah said to him, Oh Ibrahim, submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said to Allah jalla wa ala, I indeed submit myself. Some of the scholars of Islam, they give varying different reasons as to why Ibrahim became an ummah, why he became a leader of the prophets, why he became the khalil, the friend of Allah, why he was the chosen and preferred and selected one. And why Allah jalla wa ala chose to legislate in this deen of ours the culture the tradition the, the example of ibrahim in the days of hajj some of them mention the scholars of islam 
that Ibrahim alayhi salam was a man that was tested. Tested so severely that in these tests, Allah Jalla wa'ala wants mankind to ponder and relate to. So Allah Jalla wa'ala establishes the Hajj and makes it a seasonal act of worship so that every single year we are reminded of the tests of Ibrahim. Because every single one of us will share in the tests of Ibrahim some type, some type of tests, some type of trials, some tribulations we'll find that are connected to the tests of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Imam al-Jarir al-Tabari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَبَلُوَكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةً وَإِلَيْنَا تُرْجَعُونَ That we will test you with evil, we'll test you with hardship, we'll test you with good, and all of this, you find a trial for you. وَإِلَيْنَا تُرْجَعُونَ And to Allah, you will return, he says, Ibn Jarir Tabari. That Allah Jalla wa Ala used Ibrahim alayhi salam as the example of tests. He tests him in good. He tests him in difficulty. And he became the mark for mankind to follow in the tests and trials that Allah Jalla wa Ala gave him. This is why Allah Jalla wa Ala made Hajj the seasonal act of worship. Not just because of the Hajj itself or the great acts of worship in itself, but to remind us of Ibrahim. To remind us of Ibrahim and his tests and how he overcame them and how he showed that level of absolute submission to Allah Jalla wa ala in these tests. So what were his tests? The ulama of Islam, they mention that Ibrahim alayhi salam, whilst he had many tests, four of these tests stick out from all of the others. The great four tests of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Number one, they say, that Allah Jalla wa ala decreed for his father to disobey Allah. In fact, Allah Jalla wa ala decreed and allowed for his father to choose the path of shirk and kufr. Ibrahim alayhi salam used to call his father, Ya Abati, La ta'mudu shaytan, O my father, O my beloved father. Don't worship the shaytan, but his father, Azar, used to carve out the idols and be responsible for it to be sold in the market. And every time his son Ibrahim would call him to Tawheed, call him to the worship of Allah, call him to abandon these idols, his father would turn away. And no doubt, many of our reverts, our convert brothers in Islam can relate to this in some way, shape or another. How many of us are sitting here today who have embraced Islam, yet their mothers, yet their fathers, or their brothers, or their sisters, or their children, are far away from Islam, still trapped in the depths of disbelief and shirk, still trapped under the ideology of our father's father, Ibrahim alayhi salam's father. So Allah Jalla wa tells us about this. The test that a father has, the test that a man has, to know that his beloved parents are still trapped in kufr. In fact, in a hadith in Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tells us, the on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Ibrahim alayhi salam will meet his father. And they have a conversation between one another. And Ibrahim alayhi salam sees his father. And he says to him, while seeing his face covered in darkness and covered in dust, فَيَقُولُ لَهُ Ibrahim. So Ibrahim says to him, أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكَ لَا تَعْصِينِي Didn't I say to you, don't disobey me. Didn't I say to you that this was the path of Allah? Didn't I say to you to follow this path? So his father will say to him, فَيَقُولُ أَبُوهُ His father will say to him, فَالْيَوْمْ لَا أَعْصِيكَ On this day, I will never disobey you. But it's too late. On this day, I will make sure I follow your path. On this day, I will abandon my whims and desires for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To which Ibrahim turns to Allah. And this shows that even then, even on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Ibrahim still has something in his heart for his father. So he turns to his Allah Jalla wa says, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord, didn't you promise me that you're not going to humiliate me? 
Didn't you promise me that you're not going to humiliate me on this day of judgment, on this day of resurrection? What greater humiliation is there than a person's father being far away from the truth? Than a person's father being punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So Allah Jalla responds to him. فَيَقُولُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ إِنِّي حَرَّمْتُ الْجَنَّةَ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ Indeed, I've made Jannah haram for those who disbelieved. Indeed, I made Jannah haram for those who disbelieved. Then Allah Jalla tells him, O oh Ibrahim, look towards your feet. So Ibrahim looks towards his feet and his father has now been transformed into a ugly sheep. He is grabbed by his feet and thrown into the fire. Hadith reported by Al-Bukhari. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to teach us a lesson in the test of Ibrahim. That Ibrahim alayhi salam, like us, was a human being. Ibrahim alayhi salam, like us, had natural type of love and affection for his beloved family, for his father, for his mother, for his family, his brothers, his sisters, his children. Yet still, Yet still, Allah Jalla wa ala tested him in this manner. So all of those who are tested in a similar manner, a similar trial, seek contentment and seek comfort in the test of Ibrahim. For those of us who lose family members due to the tests of shayateen, due to the tests of polytheism and doubts and desires of this world, and we find our loved ones treading a path that Allah Jalla wa ala detests and he hates, we see our family members following their whims and desires and leaving Islam or, for, or adopting major sin without any type of shame or embarrassment. Take from the example of Ibrahim. A pillar of a trial that will last until the end of time. A pillar of a trial that each and every single one of us may be able to relate to in some way or form. Allah Jalla wa ala tested him with disbelief of his father, tested him, with the punishment of the fire for his father, tested him as the great prophet of Allah Jalla wa ala. The second test from the major test of Ibrahim, the second pillar of a test of Ibrahim alayhi salam was that he was thrown into the fire. He was thrown into the fire, catapulted into the fire by the disbelievers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as he was being catapulted into the fire, Allah Jalla wa'ala says, قُلْنَا يَا نَارْ كُونِي بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٌ Oh, you fire, become cool and become tranquil for Ibrahim. As he was being thrown into the fire, the angel Jibreel descended and said to him, Oh, Ibrahim, would you like some assistance? Would you like some help? To which he responded by saying, From you, no, but from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, حَسْبِ Allah." وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ حَسْبِ Allah, He said, Allah is enough for me. Allah is enough for me. Thus this pillar of a trial can be related to all of us as well. That we'll come to a situation whereby our faith, our faith, our iman will be the reason why we are tested and why we are trialed and why we are oppressed, why our rights may be taken away from us. We look around the world and we see this. We see this in China, we see this in Palestine, we see this in the lands of the Muslims, we see this in the lands of the disbelievers. Muslims being trialed due to their faith. Muslims being trialed due to their faith. Ibrahim was trialed due to his faith, a pillar of a trial. But he sought comfort, he sought contentment in Allah Jalla wa'ala. That's Allah Jalla wa'ala made a season of worship, not just for Hajj, but to remember the trials of Ibrahim, to remember what made Ibrahim Ibrahim, what made him this chosen, selected one, what made him the friend of Allah. The so brothers and sisters in Islam, whenever you find that Islam is the reason for you to be picked on, for you to be insulted, for you to be mocked, for you to be less preferred than others, for you to be degraded or demoted, for you to be sacked or treated in a different manner, for you to be treated harshly by your companions or by your workmates. Seek comfort and content in the pillow of a trial of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He wasn't just tested. He wasn't just trialed. He wasn't just insulted. Rather, he was stuck, tied to a catapult and thrown into the fire. How many of us will test, 
will taste this same test. How many of us will be thrown into a fire? How many of us will find an entire nation insulting us and mocking us and laughing at us? Indeed, it was none other than Ibrahim alayhi salam. From the pillars of a test that Ibrahim alayhi salam was tested with, as the ulama of Islam they mention, is that Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah jalla wa ala commanded him to leave his son and to leave his wife in a barren, in a barren land, in a land that had no cultivation, no fruits and no vegetables, a land that had no water, no streams and no people, a land that had no home, a land that was barren. And in fact, some of the ulama of Islam, they say, ponder about this test from the angle of Ibrahim, because we often look at it from the angle of his wife, Hajar, and her son, Ismail alayhi salam. Ponder over it from the angle of Ibrahim. Allah Jalla wa ala gave Ibrahim this son when he was old, alayhi salam. When he needed help and assistance, alayhi salam. Allah Jalla wa ala granted him this son Ismail. From the angle of Ibrahim, how would it feel to leave your wife and to leave your son in a land where there is no one available? In a land when there is no food and there is no drink, because the father, a husband, is the shepherd of his folk, of his flock. A father, the husband, is the one who is responsible to take care and to assist and to look after his children. So how would he feel? Alayhi salam. How would he feel? A type of a type of faith that we cannot compare to. We've been told by our Lord, Allah Jalla wa ala, to leave our wife, that is our responsibility. To leave our son, a child that you've asked for after a long time, Allah Jalla wa ala gives you this child. In a land that is, not, that, is not, that is not inhabited by anybody. In a land that is barren, in a land of no food and no water, or no shelter and no assistance. So he leaves them, alayhi salam. A test the ulama of Islam, they say, that when there are trials and tests for people's family, when there are trials and tests, that due to your religion, your family is taken away from you. Due to your religion, your children are confiscated. Due to your religion, your women are harassed. Due to your religion, you are now taken away and you are now put out of the equation of taking care and giving sustenance, giving provisions for your family, which is your role, your responsibility. Seek comfort and contentment in the test of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Seek comfort and contentment in the test of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The when Allah jalla wa ala decreed to take his family away from him, when Allah jalla wa ala decreed to take him out of the equation of being the provider, being the protector, being the one that looks after his family members, when Allah jalla wa ala decreed to take him away from his family, it was Allah jalla wa ala that provided for them. It was Allah Jalla wa ala from above the seven heavens that provided for them. That sent the angel Jibreel to dig a hole in the water, a hole on the earth, and therefore, and, and from there spring forth the Zamzam water that is still found today and still drunk by many Muslims today. Allah Jalla wa ala protected Hajar and protected Ismail to show us an example, O oh brothers, O oh sisters in Islam. That if your faith ever leads you to be persecuted, if your faith ever leads you to be imprisoned, if your faith ever leads for your children to be confiscated, which is the tradition and norm now in many Scandinavian countries, adopted now in some parts of this country as well, if this, your faith, leads for these trials and these tribulations, don't, don't ever become sad. Don't lose hope and don't despair. For Allah Jalla wa ala will protect them and look after them and grant them comfort and contentment just like how he did for Ibrahim. Just like how he did for Ibrahim alayhi salam. A pillar of a test that mankind as a whole can relate to until the end of time. I will discuss the final pillar in the second part of the khutbah. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين 
نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وبعد after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected Hajar and protected Ismail alayhi salam and returned them back to Ibrahim. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he had that father and son relationship that every father and every son craves for. And they began building the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They began helping one another, assisting one another in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعِي قَالَ يَا بُنَيْهِ إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكِ And when he became old, when Allah Jalla Wala decreed for there to be a certain time, Ibrahim alayhi salam was tested one more, once more. And he saw in his dream that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted Ibrahim to slaughter, to slaughter his son. Just like how you will slaughter an animal. قَالَ يَا أَبَتِي إِفْعَلْ مَا تُعْمَرْ So Ismail said to him, O oh, my beloved father, do what you have been commanded to do. Satajiduni, insha'Allah, min as sabirin You'll find me in the permission of Allah to be from those who are patient. Do what you've been commanded to do. A pill of a test, a pill of a trial. And this trial resonates with many of us too in the sense that there are certain things in this world that hold us back from completing the perfect levels of worship. Sometimes this may be our financial means, our financial gains or objectives. Sometimes this may be our different jobs or professions. Sometimes this may be our companions. Sometimes it may be our friends or our loved ones. So in this pillar of a test, Allah tells us through Ibrahim alayhi salam, that if there comes a time where something may distract you from having that ultimate level of love and affection for Allah in your heart, it's time for you to slaughter it. It's time for you to detach yourself from it. It's time for you to become somebody that removed these things from your heart to see will Ibrahim, will Ibrahim alayhi salam actually show that true level of love for Allah? And he did. And he passed that test. That's every single servant of Allah. Every single servant of Allah has a Ismail alayhi salam that we need to slaughter. Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam, that we need to detach and stay away from in a the perspective of cleaning and purifying our hearts such that it's entirely and only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A test to see, will Ibrahim alayhi salam purify his heart? Was Ismail a distraction for him or not? And Allah jalla wa'ala found that even though he knew beforehand, that is Ibrahim alayhi salam had only, had only had Allah jalla wa'ala in his heart. A test and a trial until the end of time. To all these servants of Allah to look into their hearts, to look into your hearts, to look into our hearts and see what is it that is distracting ourselves from worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is it that is preventing us from performing the salah, from wearing the hijab, for growing the beard, what is it that distracting us and making us people that backbite and slander and lie? What is it that keeps calling us towards these evil paths and these evil avenues? Look into our hearts and see from this pillar of a test for Ibrahim and overcome it like him. When the Prophet ﷺ, when he went on the Isra al Mi'raj and he met prophets in the levels of the heavens. When he met Ibrahim alayhi salam in the seventh heaven, Ibrahim alayhi salam told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give us all a message. A man alayhi salam that Allah jalla wa ala refers to in Quran as the perfect, as the chosen, as the selected one, as the one that Allah has made his friend. A man that Allah jalla wa ala made a season of worship revolve around his sunnah, his practices. Our father, Ibrahim alayhi salam, the father of prophets, he said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, give to your ummah, give to your ummah a message in a hadith reported by a tirmidhi. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, what is this message? And Ibrahim alayhi salam said, tell your ummah, that I say to them, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I tell the ummah that I say to them, may the peace and the rahm of Allah jalla wa ala be sent to them. 
And then he said, and Jannah is obtained. The luxuries of Jannah is obtained by saying, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la. That's our brothers or sisters in Islam. Allah mentions Ibrahim. And Allah mentions this season of worship. And Allah Jalla wa ala makes us people that aspire and look towards him. Because he is, alayhi salam. He is, alayhi salam, a phenomenal prophet. A magnificent prophet. One of the greatest prophets ever to set foot on this earth. And his trials are trials that we can relate to. His trials are tests that all of us currently feel or we're being tested with as well. And he, alayhi salam, overcame them in a particular manner. A manner in which we must follow and we must take from his sunnah and his tradition as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who meet and sit with Ibrahim in the next life. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the companions of all prophets and messengers. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all Jannah al firdaus the highest level of Jannah under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma a'iz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma a'dhil al-Shirk wa al-Mushrikin. Allahumma innaka afu un tuhibbu al-Af wa fa'fu anna. Allahumma rabbana atina fi al-Dunya hasana wa fi al-Akhirati hasana wa qina a'zab al-Nar. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Qumu lissalam.